What's up, guys? Very cool interview in store for you, getting into deep information about creatine, how it's manufactured, the history of creatine. And I'm talking to Dr. Jeff Golini. If you guys are remotely familiar with the sport nutrition world uh, and creatine supplementation in general, you may have heard about him and also his impact on the industry. He has an awesome story, awesome bio, which we'll get into, but specifically what he's really known for and what we're getting deep into is creatine. He was one of the individuals, if not the individual, who brought creatine to market. Uh, so this is according to him, but we're going to get into that a little bit. Uh, also most famous for making a special patented form of creatine called crealkaline, which boasts itself as the most stable form of creatine, meaning that doesn't convert to the waste product crealkaline. This has been met with critics, and if you're looking in the creatine monohydrate supplementation, you've probably come across this at the very least in some fashion. I've certainly in the past supplemented with crealkaline. I actually picked some up uh, recently because of doing this interview to kind of give another kind of spin. But according to him, we're going to get into how he brought creatine to market, uh, why creatine traditional creatine manufacturing processes is kind of flawed or has a flaw in the way it converts to crealkaline. Again, this is met with a lot of criticism, so that's why I wanted to bring him on, kind of hear from the horse's mouth, just out of genuine interest. So we're going to hear all that stuff. We'll talk about uh, just ideal dosing of creatine, when to take it, the overall supplementation recommendations of who should take it, should everybody be taking it. All sorts of information, guys. I'll put timestamps down below, links in the description box, especially to his website and also uh, Creolkin if you guys want to try it out for yourself. Let's jump into the interview. All right, so I'm here with Dr. Jeff Golini, and he is the, to get the full title right, the executive scientist at All American Pharmaceuticals. And I've known, this is actually kind of a big honor for me because I've known, I've not known Jeff personally, but I've seen his face or written into him since I was in my 20s. Uh, and I purchased his products, specifically Creolkin. We'll get into that. <laughs> I really want to get into really Jeff's background, the history of creatine specifically, again, a lot of questions about creatine, specifically their patented product, Crealkaline. Uh, just go over, over some common questions about that. Uh, and really, again, like I said, this is it's a big honor because Jeff is definitely a mainstream uh, mainstay in the industry and in sport nutrition world. He's a lot of information. And so really excited for this uh, great opportunity to talk to Dr. Jeff Golini. Do you like being called Dr. Jeff, Jeff. Or oh, you know, I go by anything, man. You know, most people say Dr. Jeff just because, but Jeff, whatever, whatever's comfortable for you, uh, you know. <laughs> we should probably start with this because if you're going to wonder what's going on. Are you So you're in the, this is a typical day. You're in yes. kinda, your lab. So what, what's going on right now? Just with you with the stuff on. Yeah. Right? So, uh, you know, normally when I do interviews, I have a studio on, on site, but uh, that is up in the front office and I'm back in my lab office. So uh, the entire plant, this is what we wear, scrubs and hairnets and booties. Uh, when we step out of the lab and we go into the production area, you know, we add the face mask. But I am back in my lab office, um, which is connected to the R&D lab. That's where, you know, all the research and development goes on and all the formulations and, the, as they say, the magic, you know, <laughs> fun stuff. So this is, are you actually in the process of like formulating new products and what you're doing or is this just typical stuff you have that on? Uh, yeah. Product. I mean, we just, you know, when I come to work, as soon as I, I enter through the clean rooms, I mean, this is, this is everybody's garb back here, you know, black, as you can see, uh, we're color coded. So this is the color of the R and D staff, just again, for security purposes and make sure people are in the right office, uh, right area. But yeah, I mean, on a daily routine, uh, you know, from, for the brands, I'm always formulating new products and new ideas. Um, you know, we do contract manufacturing. So, you know, we're, we're working on formulas for other companies. Um, I'm always, uh, you know, tinkering and, you know, trying to come up with, uh, you know, some new item or some better way of doing things. So there's always something going on back here. That's really, that's really fascinating. It's way more already than I thought was going on. I mean, maybe you can enlighten us a little bit, but <laughs> let's, well, let's get into just your bio. I know you got a big bio, just being yeah. an industry and office. You were a bodybuilder too. You just want to give us a bio in your background. Yeah, sure. You know, I started as an athlete. Um, I played high school football, basketball, track, all conference, all whatever, you know, all state, uh, you name it. I went on to, uh, I was recruited for two sports uh, back in the, you know, early uh, 80s, late 70s. That was kind of unheard of. Um, I only played one year of basketball. I wasn't big enough, although I enjoyed it. I was only six foot and, you know, here I'm playing against, you know, six foot nine, six foot 10. So I ended up, you know, just concentrating on football. I lettered four years um, varsity. I, uh, during that time, I also powerlifted. I had, you know, several state records. I held the the state um, 
squat record for some time. The same with our, our high school squat record, I think, uh, stayed for over 25 years before it got broke. Um, my goal was always to go into the NFL. I mean, that really day one, I wanted to go into the NFL and, um, I had some tryouts my senior year, uh, in the spring and I was out training and I pulled a hamstring and I couldn't go to the tryout. And, and again, I was just depressed. It was my whole life. I went back home for the summer um, after I had graduated. And one of the guys at the gym said, Hey, you know, you should enter this bodybuilding contest. And I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, I need something to do, you know? Um, so I entered the Mr. Lorraine. I, I uh, grew up in Lorraine, which is outside Cleveland and Ohio. Uh, and I won. And all of a sudden I kind of got hooked on the whole thing. I'm like, so I kind of forgot about football and literally started, you know, Hey, this bodybuilding is pretty fun. And, uh, you know, started, uh, training and uh powerlifting in between we entered you know bench contest and you know powerlifting meets and stuff uh because that's how we trained back in ohio with all the the big powerlifters uh, and such back there and then a guy that i was training with uh his name was steve davis uh he had won the nationals and he was going to go out to venice beach california gold's gym for the summer so he's like hey let's go out there for the summer and that uh, will train, you know, we got jobs and uh, places to stay and free memberships. So, yeah, we get out there. We had none of that. Um, <laughs> they left at the end of the summer. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to do this, I need to be here, you know. So I ended up staying and, you know, had a successful uh, bodybuilding career, 10 years um, and um, retired um, in 92. But during that time, that's how I learned about supplements. I was working uh, for general nutrition centers. And I really discovered there was nothing that they sold at that time that really benefited me. The protein was terrible tasting. Uh, everything was tablets. And I don't know, it just didn't do anything. There wasn't anything of good quality. So, you know, with my science background, that's where I started uh, kind of this uh, journey into the business. And were you going, so that was when you were out there, that was kind of like your college years. Did you, were you going to school at the same time or was that after the, no, I finished, so I finished uh, my bachelor's um, in Ohio and then basically was done. And when I got into bodybuilding, you know, that was all I did. I mean, you know, that, that was my job, you know, seven days a week, pretty much 24 hours a day. You know, we were serious uh, as most of the California bodybuilders at that time, you know, Tom Platts, uh, Samir Banut, the Barbarian Brothers, Mike Christian, you know, all the the Golden Age bodybuilders were were out there. And that was what we did. Um, But kind of got lost on my train of thought there. So your college, did you go? Oh, oh, yeah. So then, uh, yeah. So then after, you know, after I moved to Montana, and I moved the business up here and really started to get into manufacturing. And I started to get into uh, doing a lot of research. Um, I went back to school because, uh, number one, it was I always had to find a doctor to publish a paper because they won't publish a paper without a doctor. And that was a hassle. So I thought, you know, I like science. Let me just go ahead and, uh, you know, it took a while because I was doing it off campus. You know, I started um, with one school and, you know, kind of moved on to another and, you know, got my master's and finished up with my PhD. And, uh, you know, it probably took me about 15 years, but, uh, you know, finally achieved it. And and I really did it more for, again, being able to do the research I needed to do without um, having to find, uh, you know, a medical doctor or a PhD and such. Um, you know, I learned a lot along the way, too, but most of it was stuff I was already doing anyhow, so... So then during that period after the bodybuilding, once you started and you were, and you were working uh, for the GNCs, did what what was the business development? Then again, I guess leading into creatine. Yeah, well, you know, the so uh, back then, uh, milk and egg protein was all we had, and it was terrible tasting. Trying to choke that down. And again, we were very strict, you know, no sugar, no fat. We were high protein, high carbs. So trying to mix this protein up and, you know, Splenda, well, we didn't have Splenda, we had um, saccharin and, you know, I mean, all the <laughs> non-calorie, I mean, it, w- it was hard to choke down. So I got this idea. I wonder if I could get somebody to make a tablet out of this protein. I mean, that was my my big breakthrough. And I found a, a company out in San Diego that uh, was a little a private label manufacturer and they were able to do it. <clears throat> so I saved up $3,500 
And the, the gal that used to make my posing trunks, I was telling her that I was going to do this and I needed a name. And she's like, well, you're an all-American athlete. Call it like all-American nutrition or something. So I started out as all-American nutritional supplements. Uh, I made uh, these, um, I called them amino acid tablets, but they were nothing more than calcium caseinate tablets. Wow. I went into Gold's Gym and I sold them to pay for my own use. And that was all I wanted to do was sell enough to pay for my own use. Um, reinvested, did another batch. And, you know, pretty soon a couple of local stores wanted to carry them. And, you know, <clears throat> I added an egg protein and uh, was just doing it out of my apartment. Wow. Um, friend of mine that I was, uh, I was a personal trainer. We started the personal training back uh, in the eighties at Gold's Gym. That's kind of where it all started. He had a garage and he let me rent his garage. So I moved into the garage and, you know, then after a couple of years, I thought, you know, I'm going to try this full time. And I, I rented a little basement um, to this apartment building it used to be an old hotel right on uh, Venice Beach. And I went full time with it and again, started developing products, uh, working with a couple of my uh, manufacturers that I could work along with. And that's kind of how it started. I started as a brand and, you know, I gained just enough popularity as a bodybuilder to be able to do guest posings and seminars. And of course I would bring the brand and the little dog and pony show along with it. And, you know, that's how I would do is every weekend I would try to get a booth at some show and just go out there and, you know, pedal what I was doing. And that's um, awesome. Yeah, it kind of got to the point where back then I had to buy what everybody else was basically making. I couldn't really customize things. And that's where I started to have ideas of, you know, I wanted to start making my own things. Um, and when I moved to Montana, I, I was able to do that. California, there were too many restrictions. Uh, you know, my little place was only, um, what, 1,100 square foot. So, I mean, you know, I had a wall down the middle. I built half office, half little warehouse, you know. Yeah. Uh, had to take everything up, an old, oldest air, uh, um, elevator, you know, for UPS to come pick up. And, you know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So that's a great – I mean, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of – stuff in the middle of that but I mean, oh when, yeah <laughs> when, you, when you got to uh where did creatine come around because that's that's something I yeah because i did see and you were featured in this documentary i saw it a while ago and actually sometimes i show it to my sport nutrition class the subs documentary oh the subs yep yep and you did talk about you were featured in that but i've also heard you talk about i think somewhere in the youtube channel about how you were credited as bringing or you you said you were one of the kind of brought creatine uh, market. yeah and i don't thought that was really covered I heard that in the in the movie because if I watched the movie, I think they had a different story with EAS and some other guy talking there, about. He read some article in Nature. There so is, what, you know, the some of the old times. There, there is always an argument on who did. You know, now that it's you know twenty some years, thirty years, or whatever. Um, but the way that it happened. Uh, I started inventing things. Now, you know, I, I'm getting in. I'm making, uh, you know, sublingual liquids and. Um, what differentiated me as a manufacturer, again, I was just a small little guy, you know, five staff, was innovation. You know, I was innovating. Um, a company, a, John, a gentleman by the name of John Cribbs, he was out of California. He had a company called SoCal. Uh, he called me up and said, hey, you know, I have heard of this thing called creatine. Can I send you this little research that I found from the Olympics in Europe? You know, do you think you can make it? So he sent it and I'm like, oh, this looks pretty interesting. And I looked everywhere. It was not commercially available. There was no EAS. EAS didn't even exist. There was no Creapir out of Germany. I found a little manufacturer, uh, a drug manufacturer in the USA called Fansteel Labs. And they had it on their product list. They were making about 25 kilos every six months for research purposes. So fast forward, I contracted with them to be able to scale up production. And uh, Cal Farm would typically buy 5,000 bottles. And I had net 30 from Fansteel and Cal Farm paid me COD. So I had to quickly get it in, stick 100 grams in a bottle, ship it out so that I can get paid in order to pay the bill. Because I, again, I, you know, my sales were, you know, $15,000 a month. And now here comes, you know, $20,000, $30,000 worth of sales. And it worked. You know, it was $99 a bottle. You had to call a 1-800 number, leave a message. And uh, they said they'd ship it in four to six weeks. And that's how creatine came to the marketplace. Um, I then started private labeling it for some other companies once I was able to build some capital up to actually stock it. 
Um, EAS, um, they, they were a little company. Um, and, you know, again, I'm not going to mention names and stuff, but the before Bill Phillips got involved, they were a little company, I think, out of Vegas. And uh, this particular person who had also claimed to be before me, he called up one of my customers a year and a half into it and said, hey, I got this new thing I can get called creatine monohydrate. And my friend George Zangus from Marathon Nutrition said, oh, I've had it out for a year. Impossible. Uh, so, you know, it, it kind of debunked the whole thing. Um, EAS came into the play about probably another two and a half years later. The same with Creapur. You know, I mean, um, we were uh, we were the only uh, USA manufacturer because as I started to get into this, of course, my science background goes, I'm going to figure out how to synthesize this. So I worked diligently and I came up with a way to synthesize it and, you know, had enough capital. Again, you know, I put in a reactors and we built a, a small, you know, creatine manufacturing and we were manufacturing, uh, you know, creatine monohydrate right here in Billings. And it wasn't until, you know, China started dumping it uh, mid to late eighties that, you know, it kind of put us out of business from that standpoint, but, what happened was, is I was actually making crealkaline and I had to try to bring the pH down in order to introduce it into the marketplace. So everything I learned was actually led to, you know, my discovery, which then led to the formulation on how to actually synthesize that. Wow. So it, it, at that time with creatine, well, even going back to the cost, when that first came out, and I don't want to break the point because we'll be on right. here forever, just in the history of the creatine, <laughs> but was that, because it was, I, when I heard it was $100 roughly for yep. how many servings grams. was that? 100 grams. Well, oh, okay. yeah, so it was five grams. Um, you know, five grams was a serving size. Um, now, was a lot gram. of that based, I mean, I'm not going to explain like the cost, yeah. what the cost was, but I mean, how much was that a legit how much of a markup really was that? Was it because it was I think so I think I was selling it to them for about twenty bucks. I was making it probably for ten. It was expensive because again, you okay, know, yeah, it, right. it wasn't commercially available. Uh, they were making a good profit. And again, I I didn't care. You know, I was I was more than happy to have the business and for me to have every month, you know, be able to deliver five thousand bottles and make you know ten bucks a bottle. I mean, that was big business for us. Right. It it really launched everything. Um, and, and then, you know, the interesting thing that kind of led into that is then there was a little study out of Europe that said, Hey, loading, maybe be good. So all of a sudden we're like, Hey, wait a minute. If we can tell people you got to load, they got to buy three bottles the first month. Right. So yeah. that's how the loading came. It was really a marketing ploy. Again, I'm not, not, uh, you know, proud of it, but you know, that that's how we did things. We thought, Oh, Hey, let's get people to load and, you know, 20, 30 grams. And now their first order, they got to buy three bottles instead of one, you know? Well, I know still, they still like to talk about loading if you need yeah. it like immediately, if you need to, if you wanted the effects quicker, is that some truth to that? Like if you got to like, no, your body on can only, your body can only use so much. I mean, what, okay. I, what I found over the years, and I've done more research than any singular company on creatine. You know, there's a lot of people who are researchers like uh, Mr. Harris out of the UK, uh, who's done tons of research um, just on creatine. But, you know, he works for a university. So, you know, we discovered that your body can only use so much at a time. So the whole loading thing didn't really benefit. Um, and then, of course, you know, as we found out that the creatine wasn't stable, then it kind of made sense why people, some people would get some better results from loading than not loading. Um but it was really more their consistency because now they they did it every day where in the beginning, you know, they do it a couple of days, miss a day, don't take it on the weekend. And, you know, creatine is one of those things you got to take every day because it's in and out of your system in about three hours, three and a half hours. So let's get, cause I, I know, I'm, I'm already thinking there's so many questions in the background <laughs> people. I want, I want to, let's first just say, you know, maybe if you were to succinctly say to somebody, cause there's a lot of people be watching this, right. Who maybe kind of heard of creatine. <laughs> And I still find with people, I have an older brother who uses a lot of supplements. He's into working out like me. And that's one thing he's just, mm -hmm. he doesn't say why he doesn't like, oh, I'll get to it. He's like, kind of, you can tell he's a little nervous about taking, right. I don't know why, but I keep telling him like, if anything you should be taking, you're going to like feel the benefits of it. Yeah. Be creatine. So I guess, and we can get into like creatine right after this. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what would be the selling point you would tell people to, to take creatine? And I guess, should everybody be taking it? So I guess, what is creatine? Yeah. And should everybody be taking it? So people? you got to look at, you know, again, this is going back to some high school biology, you know, 101. I mean, understanding our, the human body, we can convert about anything to fuel. We can convert 
carbohydrates, sugars, proteins. I mean, we can live on minimal skews of things. Creatine is the only thing that if we don't have it, we cease to exist. We die. It's so important that our body produces it. It's what is um, kicks in that whole Krebs cycle, that whole energy cycle. People don't realize that in the first, you know, 10 seconds, you're burning glycogen. And then those creatine stores have to kick in. So normal people, you know, your body produces what it needs to enable that cycle. But we also get creatine from our food sources. Our meats are heavy in creatine. Problem is, depending on how we cook that, we are converting a lot of that creatine to creatinine. Now, you take somebody who's more active or an athlete, I always tell people it's like taking one of these top fuel dragsters and just pulling up to the town pump gas station and putting some good old unleaded that thing ain't going to roll, man. You know, you got to put that high performance fuel. So if you're asking more from your body, you want to make sure that those creatine store cells are always full. Hence the introduction of creatine. What it does, recuperation, recovery, endurance, and stamina. So no matter what your sport is, uh, what your activity level is, the faster you recuperate and recover, less injuries, build muscle, can go out and run a mile again the next day, and of course, endurance and stamina, no matter what you do, whether you're a business guy, uh, you know, a stay-at-home mom, a uh, professional athlete, I mean, that's what we're all looking for. You know, increase that by one or two percent and you are light years ahead. Let known, you know, again, depending on how much of your creatine you can actually absorb and utilize, you know, very beneficial. So everybody from young all the way up to grandma and grandpa should be taking it. What, really briefly on that too, I guess someone who's maybe older is like, I'm not really into working out. I'm not, I don't need to yeah. push heavy weights with that. Why would they want to be on creatine? So, you know, again, as we age, uh, most older people don't eat right. They don't have an appetite. So I find that they end up eating more sugar, you know, fast foods, uh, you know, donuts and such, and they don't eat enough protein. So now, you know, our body starts to slow down with everything it produces from hormones to creatine um, and they don't eat enough meat. So they're not getting enough creatine in. That's one of the reasons besides low testosterone, you know, for men, that's one of the reasons why people uh, as they age are tired, they don't recuperate, uh, they fall and, you know, they, they get injured. Um, their body is just that whole energy cycle is just not working properly. And that's one thing I tell people is when you take it, the thing I know start away is I have like a little aside the workout stuff is yeah. just the pep to your step. I feel like that yeah. that hits in the morning, just getting up and just moving. You I have sleep that good. You wake up feeling good. Um, it helps to decrease body fat because again, as your metabolism, everything is working. You know, body fat comes down. Um, and again, if you're in your 80s. Uh, you know, they're doing a lot of research on, you know, a lot of muscular diseases, a lot of uh, mental things that maybe it benefit, you know, again, there's no significant um, uh, research yet proving that, but I always tell people it's not going to hurt you, you know, creatine monohydrate is safe. Now that we, it's been out long enough, there's been enough studies uh, showing that it's safe. So again, you know, for, for older people who don't work out to take a small dose, so, you know, 750, 750 milligrams is, is enough to kick in, you know, uh, they don't need to take a whole lot. Like, you know, like people who are, you know, serious athletes or training, you know, and it's subtle too, because it's not something I think if you're on it for a while, you don't notice you kind of get used to those benefits. Oh, then go so you, off. And when you come off and come back yep. down, like, okay, I know what that was like. Yeah. Yep. Then you feel, you remember yeah. what you used to feel like before you started it. So let's, let's get into Crealcalin now, which people, and you can get into the, the nitty gritty of the differences. Sure. I actually have two different kinds here. Cause I have, uh, when I, I have a whole different color, I've been like, like I said, creatine forever. I'll uh -huh. buy bulk supplements, cheap creatine. Uh, I still think I buy the like, Crea here. You can talk about Crea yeah. if that's, if that's something to be mindful. Yeah, about, sure. Uh, but then certainly your Crealcalin, these purple pills, which the, again, the, yep. When I was talking to you, I'm like, I got to pick up this again and I'll get into maybe why I haven't, which is to be honest, yeah. what these are the thoughts I have of, I think sitting through enough, uh, sport nutrition conferences. And when it's, someone talks about creatine, there's a creatine expert there. They'll inevitably get to the point of creatine forms and they'll kind of settle on the, the blanket statement, just right. take creatine monohydrate. You don't need any special patented forms. And they're kind of maybe poking, nodding sure. towards what you guys are doing. Yeah. 
how would you kind of address some of those critics and what's the benefit of taking creatinine? Because one more last thing is when I first heard about this, the funny story I had was when I was in college, I got a blood test mm-hmm. and I was, I was doing a lot of things excessively in college that could have raised my creatinine <laughs> stores. But my, my parents are like, oh, you're, you're, you're freaking out that my kidneys yeah. are going to fail and my creatinine levels were so high. And that's when I actually, I don't know if it was that or not, but I did start taking your product even back when it had the clear mm-hmm. label, you know? Um, so I remember taking that because I thought, it was yeah. better for my kidneys. And is that true or not true? Is it? Yeah, know? yeah, it is. So, I mean, you got to look at, first of all, creatine monohydrate is the only form that your body can actually absorb. Your body has to take that. And before it can be converted, you know, it has to convert to a creatine phosphate. So, you know, our bodies are very complex. People forget about that. Just because you put it in your mouth doesn't mean that your body's going to use it or absorb it. It's going to come out the other end. I mean, for the most part. So that's fact, you know, I mean, that's any scientist knows that uh, any biochemist, anybody who's uh, been around, you know, anyone who doesn't agree on that, you know, is not true. The problem I discovered. So again, I was working with creatine for a long time and we were always, when we started synthesizing it, you know, we discovered that if we didn't manufacture it right, there was creatinine, there was disiamine, you know, there were, there were um, basically contaminants because of the synthesis process. We're using, you know, cyanamide and sarcosine. I mean, these are nasty, you know, and you're reacting them and you're trying to participate participate out this crystal. So you got to get rid of all of the uh, bioactive uh, waste, basically. Um, which, so is we were huge, tr- which is huge right there for the average person. I to interrupt yeah. you, but I think the not knowing that background about how yeah. it's synthesized, just that, I think that process alone is kind of enlightening as far as at least. It's, yeah, who, people don't, who, who people don't even think about it. So so I was constantly trying to make sure that our product was clean. And, you know, again, um, products were coming in from China. Now creatine started, uh, China started manufacturing. And we started to see that China was very low quality. Uh, we got into, let's uh, let's tell people to add sugar. Now we can cut the, the creatine. You know, we can give them 30 grams and five pounds and it's all sugar. And then we got into effervescence. So one day I was bored in the lab and I thought, I wonder what happens if I actually activate these products I'm making and test them. You know, I, it's one of those things, had nothing to do. So I started taking the effervescence and the fruit flavored and the sugar. That was the first in- kind I ever took, by the way. The first creatine as a kid was effervescent in a packet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I used to do all that, you know. Yeah. And uh, and all of a sudden, I'm like, where's the creatine, man? I got all this creatinine. Something's wrong with my machine. And, you know, this is a $100,000 you know, a uh, near infrared spectroscopy a machine that's, you know, accurate. So I have a friend that had a, a, a laboratory um, and I sent off to him and said, hey, you know, something's not right. And he did the same thing. And he said, well, no, you know, creatine's not stable. I mean, we know that from a chemistry standpoint. And I didn't know that, you know, that it had a flaw. So went to the Merck index and, oh my gosh, creatine has a flaw. And I did find in the original guy who, who invented the synthesis back in the mid 1800s out of, I can't remember, Scandinavia, I had to have it all converted. And he did talk about the instability of, of a synthesized creatine. So the more I started to research, I, I discovered that the lower the pH more acidic. And we were telling people to mix it with fruit juice, the quicker that conversion took place. So, you know, my chemistry says, well, what happens if I go up the other scale and I alkalize it? I got up to pH 14 and I was able to get regular creatine monohydrate to not convert to creatinine. All right, I'm on to something here, but you can't drink that because I'm using caustic things that would burn your lips and stomach, you know? Um, So, went to bed and, uh, you know, I, I feel the good Lord gave me the formula uh, as we were talking prior to the show starting. Mm-hmm. And I came in with this formula in my head. And within two hours, I worked out a formula, how to synthesize creatine, basically buffering it. And that's what led into crealcalin. And, you know, that led into the patents and all the research, you know, and the claim that, you know, crealcalin was the world's only stable creatine monohydrate. Now, keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with creatine monohydrate other than the flaws. From day one, when I introduced it, people reported water retention, bloating, 
you know, diarrhea headaches, the women would not use it because they didn't want a bloated stomach and, you know, all that water retention. Um, and I would always talk about, you know, back then, you know, there were still VHS movies and then we got on the DVDs. Now I kind of, uh, Relate it to cell phones, you know, I mean, if you want to use an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 1, it still works, but it's got flaws, you know, I mean, the technology has increased. Same thing with creatine monohydrate. It works, but you got to realize that as soon as it hits solution, instantaneously, it starts to convert to creatinine. So now you are ingesting creatinine. Creatinine is a bio waste. Is it going to kill you the first time? No, but we know that we don't want to start taxing our kidneys. Um, I went on to write about 12 years ago, uh, a medical book called The Dangers of Creatinine. It has nothing to do with supplements. It's creatinine in general. Um, I touch basically on supplements, but I show how we we barbecue our, our beef and that high heat converts a lot of that creatine to creatinine. And again, when you go in for a physical, um, they do a urine test and they check out your creatinine outflow. Because again, you know, you, your kidneys are your filters of these toxins. I then went on to, to discover that that was what was causing all the side effects, not creatine monohydrate. So is creatine monohydrate safe? Absolutely, it's great. But this side effect, this instability in water, converting it to creatinine, creatinine is what you don't want to be ingesting. You know, um, creatinine it- fix that flaw. So, I mean, all we did was fix that flaw so you get all the benefits of creatine monohydrate but without those side effects. And I had some stuff pulled up here. Now, for the sake of time, I won't like to read it verbatim, but I guess right. some of the arguments were that <laughs> when you mix the, and maybe you can touch on certain forms, yeah. like reappear. I mean, for me, it, it's that little, I was thinking of a few years ago, Tommy Boy, the guarantee yeah. on the box. <laughs> when I yeah. see reappear, it makes me think of like, okay, it's safer, manuf- at least yep. the manufacturing process would be more controlled. Yep. But um, there were some, I guess the claims, I think there were some studies ass- assumingly saying that and I'm, this is kind of what you're getting. I'm right. not sure, but are you saying, like, let's say it's creep pure, and I don't know, say just creep specifically. Yeah, but if you yeah. put it in water and you mix it up, you're saying instantaneously it's turning to creatinine, yeah. or is yeah. it within a? Because nope. I've heard the whole window. No, so is it a varying it, degrees? Is that what you're saying? It does. So the the thing that when I first when I first released this research, people are telling me, oh, it, creatine is stable. Even creep pure guys, I have battled with them. For many years, uh, oh, it's stable. Their website would say oh, it's stable. And slowly they started to change their tune because they knew I was right. So then they started to say, well, creapure is it's stable in powder form, but creatine is not stable in solution. So they were starting to slowly come over where now, you know, again, everybody can agree that creatine monohydrate is not stable in solution. The lower the pH, the quicker the conversion. Now, temperature, saturation, a lot of things depend on, you know, how much of that creatine is converted. But if you were to go up to the gas pump, and I don't care whether you're paying a dollar a gallon or $4 a gallon, and they said, oh, as you start to pump, you know, you're going to lose 1%, 5%, 10%, or we're cutting your gas 1, 10, 20%, we'd freak out. First of all, I don't want water in my gas tank. You know, it's going to ruin the engine. I don't want to ingest creatinine. It's not good for me. I did a study with mice where I gave them pure creatinine and they were like, they were drunk. They were so lethargic. Um, And many people have done the same type of studies. So again, our kidneys, when we damage our kidneys, it's irreversible. So, you know, some people say, and again, this is the same argument that I heard 20 some years ago. Um, and I stood my ground because I had research to back up and all of the older people finally realized I knew what I was talking about. Now we got the younger generation who they, everything you read on the internet or on social media by some influencer, you know, again, they're, they're talking out of emotion or naiveness, you know, and, uh, Again, the story hasn't changed. Our bodies have not changed in 2,000 years, and neither has creatine monohydrate. Now, creapures claim the fame. Uh, they did a great job with making sure that those impurities during the manufacturing uh, aspect were very, very low, where Chinese creatine, they didn't care. Like most stuff coming out of China, it, it was all about cost, and they didn't is that, care Is about- it still kind of the case now? Which, And in a yep. side note, as most, yep. I always hear most creatine, other than the creatine in Germany, is all cre- most creatine from China, and is your stuff- oh, 
made here or is your yep. stuff from nope. China? No, nope. Crealcon is 100% is the only creatine. And I don't care if you say HCL, soluble, whatever you want to call it. Crealcon is the only USA manufactured creatine at really? this time. Because I thought, oh, you just got stuff from China and then no. you made it better and you made sure it was safe. See I, I lucked out, see, I lucked out in my patent. My very first patent, I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't want to tell anybody how I actually made it. So my counsel said, well, you know, you just have to give an example. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, how can I raise the pH of creatine? Let me add some uh, baking soda. And I was granted a patent with, that was one way of doing it. And I didn't have to actually divulge how I actually make it. So that was the argument. Oh, he just puts, you know, just take creatine monohydrate and put baking soda. Right. This I've was, heard that certainly. This is yeah. the argument 20 years ago. And then let's look at a science standpoint. Baking soda is only pH nine. So how do you get the 14 with, with uh, baking soda and try to take two or three tablespoons of baking soda to get that pH up in solution, you know, um, ain't going to happen, man. I mean, you know, you couldn't drink it. You'll throw up. So again, it's mostly people's naiveness about, you know, again, about biochemistry, about chemistry, about creatine itself, how it's made, but yes, everything comes from China all forms, HCL, soluble, whatever you want to call it, AKG, EKG, it's all Chinese made. Um, Creapir is made in Germany. Crealcon is made in the USA. And those are the only places manufacturing any kinds of creatine. Wow. That's, a, yeah, that's amazing because I think oftentimes I know people like there's some companies like I'm just thinking, well, there's some on Amazon, they're like, you know, USA companies that are yeah. really well respected, they're tested and have all these things. But for the consumer, if you're looking at first glance, you just kind of think, okay, is it, it's made here? Or I just kind of assume, okay, yeah, they're saying it's made in the United States from just foreign creatine. They, put it, they put it in a bottle here. So they'll, you know, the, the right. creatine monohydrate comes over in drums from China and then, you know, co-packers will stick their label on it. Same with Creapir. Creapir does, uh, they sell the raw material. So USA people just take the Creapir, put it in a bottle, put a label right. on it. That's not manufactured. That's just packaged. And according to the FDA, you can't say manufactured because you didn't make it. Wow. You know? Yeah, that's, ama that's amazing. That's so amazing. Yeah. I did not know just now that, that you guys make that. that. That alone to me is huge that you guys are making that here. Yeah. And I've been, like I said, I've been doing it for years. It started with regular creatine monohydrate, <clears throat> which then led into, you know, Crealcline because we, we had the technology. Um, and what I discovered, you know, again, was a, a formula to be able to raise that pH during the synthesis process. Um, and that, Going again, back to what you said on, the, on just yeah. the stability and sorry to interrupt you again, but that's the, okay. um, the, I guess that'd be the main thing I guess people are going to be thinking of is like if when they leave here, they're going to be saying, and again, we could, I could go on forever here, but yeah. when they, uh, with, if I just got a create a, a good quality creatine and I can sure you can attest to the fact too, my the biggest concern for most people now is just heavy metals and stuff that's yeah. contaminants. That's so buying from reputable brand is really important. Oh, absolutely. But if you, this idea of like stability of let's say create pure regular creatine monohydrate, you're saying that there's really, is there really no way of like, if I just took five grams of creatine, put it in water and test it, is it not just right then and there in that water or is it something the way when someone consumes it it's different so i guess the level of stability how much is that it, it, it really like i said it really depends i mean you know it um when you take a certain amount of volume of a of a fluid let's just say water you put one gram in there you got more room uh, more room for conversion you put uh, enough in there where you make a paste you don't have as much much room for conversion so how much you use depends on how quick that conversion takes. Now, water is relatively neutral. It's about, you know, 6.5, depending on what water you use. You lower that pH, fruit juice, creatines that have, you know, all these different flavors and stuff. That conversion is quicker. Wow. So that's, that's really it. Now that doesn't have anything to do when it hits the stomach acid, you know, pH three. But again, you know, I don't, I don't go there because there's too many variations, but there's more conversion that's going to take place at that point. Now, whether your creatine that you've taken 50% of it converted and you've got 50% in your stomach once creatine, whether it's from meat, pork, fish, um, curiapir, crealcaline, monohydrate, you name it. Once it's converted to creatine phosphate, it's all the same. That's why people get results because you're always going to get some creatine in. If you can deal with the side effects, which again, aren't going to kill you on a short term, but again, most of us use creatine all the time 
and to continually take in creatinine, you know, a lot of these people wonder why they're tired or they don't get good workouts or the whole, I'm a non-responder to creatine. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because your body is making creatine. The reason why you're not responding is you're not using a good form um, or you're not taking it consistently, but there's no such thing as a non-responder, you know, and, and, you know, like you're seeing some of the comments that we're seeing, they're, they're pretty comical because today, you know, uh, we used to call them the armchair quarterbacks back in my day, the guy that played seventh grade football that he's, you know, yelling at, uh, you know, Brady or, you know, these NFL football, you know, quarterbacks, you don't know what you're doing. I would be doing this. Well, now these little guys on the internet are the same way. They can, you know, get people to go, oh, oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I got 20 views and I got 200 likes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, how about the, the, then just like the dosage, just the effectiveness of Crealcline. Yep. So I guess the next thing would be questions I've heard people saying, well, well you got to take, to even get the good results from it, you got to take a lot more. So can you really get by with yeah. the minimal dose? I think you guys have a dosing where if you're going to think, like say me, 200 plus. I say 1.5 grams. So really? again, okay. you know, you got to look at all the research that I've done and people can go to allamericanpharmaceutical.com at the top, branded ingredients, Crealcline, all my research. I've got published research, peer reviewed, published. I've got all of our studies and um, people, it's kind of funny. People go, oh, well, you did those studies yourself. You know, that doesn't count. Well, who do you think does studies? Who's doing Pfizer studies? Do you think somebody's just doing five? No, we do them ourselves. Nobody's going to pay for my studies. And we spent millions of dollars on these studies, you know. But what I found, again, our body is continuously producing creatine. We are all eating protein. We're getting creatine. I found that 1.5 grams per dose is really optimal for the majority of the people. Now people will go on and say, Oh, you published a study with these Olympic uh, lifters and they use, you know, 7.5 grams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are professionals. These guys were taking 20 grams of creatine monohydrate. They were the best in the world, you know, and we did a double blind study where we started with a low dose, 1.5 grams of creatine monohydrate, versus crealcline and we went all the way up to 10 or 15 grams and we found that for them 7.5 grams was the best it outperformed the creatine monohydrate they were taking creatine monohydrate they went off for several months and then they got in crealcline so we had a really good way of measuring um but they didn't take it all at once they took a gram and a half several times a day but again these guys are training 14 hours a day I don't know how you right. can lift weights for 14 hours a day, but, you know, right. they, they are kind of like, you know, taking, you know, our NBA or N our NFL players. I mean, that ain't us, you know, those guys are. So I then found that again, a gram and a half, you burn that up in about three, three and a half hours. So really you don't need more. The rest of it, you're going to waste um, again. And when you spend creatine, the bio waste, the exhaust is creatinine. I mean, that's part of the normal process. Right. So again, we don't, we don't want too much creatine going in that you can't use and your body's going to convert it to creatinine or you're going to poop it out or pee it out or whatever. So again, so the idea the, of like saturation, the idea of like saturation of creatine stores, is that not what those stores are already full. You can't, you know, yeah. think, think of a, uh, you know, like a glass of water, you know, you got all these little storage sites at the muscle. Um, once they're full, your body doesn't go, Oh, let me find someplace else. No, it gets right. rid of it. So we just want to keep it full. So again, I found a gram and a half at a time is all you need. And again, depending on your, your weight, your activity level, um, you know, we now find that for athletes, you know, three grams a day, a gram, I recommend a gram and a half in the morning, a gram and a half, about 20 minutes before training, our bottles say a gram and a half pre and post. But the main thing is the consistency, not the time of day that you use it every single day. It's in and out of your system. So you don't have to load. You don't have to cycle. You just start out at a low dose. And what we found years ago when I was introducing this, everybody said, oh, Crealcon is more expensive than creatine. No, it's not. You're telling them to take 10, 15, 20 grams. Bodybuilding.com used to evaluate everybody's product on the price per dose. Crealcon was cheaper than every other form. When you look at the amount of creatine monohydrate that they're recommending now, you got to look at 
how many servings are you getting? What is the cost? So creatinine still is very cost effective. You don't need five grams. You don't need 10 grams. Again, that's a whole misconception of these younger people being naive, listening to some influencer who, who again, you know, just is naive, you know, doesn't really understand what he's saying. He just heard it from somebody else. Well, in my brief time, just talking to you now, and I, I got <laughs> like i've heard a lot but like you just just you, you just describing some of the background and the back end of stuff i realize yeah we, the, the general consumer doesn't know half the stuff that's going on no which kind of leads me into like kind of the wrap-up question which was if you had to i guess if you're talking to a family member and again they're trying to purchase supplements or they want to purchase right. a product uh it, you can relate it back to efx products would even get into your other product line because that was something else right. i would get more in details with what are some things you would tell, again, friend, family member, knowing what you know inside the industry and how supplements are formulated and sold as far as like general recommendations, things to kind of look out for? Yep. That's, I guess, the latter is the more of the question, the insider scoop of like how yep. things are manufactured and sold. And I, I always tell people uh, a couple things. Number one, you know, it's better to buy from a store. Now, now today, you know, there's a lot of online stores, but- Store owners scrutinize the brands that they carry. They just don't go buy the cheapest stuff for the most point. Mm -hmm. They do a little research to make sure they're reputable brands. So make sure that it's a reputable brand. Don't just go on Amazon and buy the cheapest stuff. Some of the comments, you know, I've seen from these younger guys, oh, Crealcon, just buy the cheapest creatine monohydrate you can find. Right. It's probably cut. But anyhow, reputable brands that you know who have been around brands like you know now foods and, and again i can i can name a whole bunch of brands that are very reputable brands that i would use usually i only use what we make but if there's something i don't make you know there's a couple brands that i know uh, they're either customers or i know them and i know all the testing and quality uh, number two make sure it's in the usa you know three don't buy a slick marketing scam. Oh boy. You know, this thing just popped up, you know, soluble made in the USA, better absorption. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, do some research about, uh, you know, what's going on. Uh, what, what is this product? Is this scientifically backed or is it just some marketing? And, you know, today marketing is out of control, whether it be our industry or any industry. Um, FDA just doesn't have enough time to catch all of these guys who are making claims. You know, you can't make claims as a dietary supplement. Crealcline for the first 15 years, I only told people what it didn't do. I never told anybody what it did do. Really? And now again, we're doing the same thing. We're telling people what it doesn't do. Now that it's been out, you know, again, people know endurance stamina, recuperation, recovery, and such. Um, but in the early days, you know, we just told people what it didn't do. Um, and then people are always shocked when they ask me, what are your top three recommendations for supplements? <laughs> you know, they're wait waiting for me to go pre-workout. I go, number one, multivitamin. Ah, no, no. Why? Well, at any given point in the day, we are deficient in some B vitamin. Those B vitamins are crucial for the absorption of our protein, carbs, and fats. You can be buying the best protein out there, but if you ain't absorbing it, it's worthless. So that's number one. Well, if we, if we, if we, pa if we pause there, because yep. I'm guilty of this, where yeah. I would pay, I would pay more money for expensive multivitamin. Now I'll just go to Costco and buy the bulk yeah. one a day. Now, is that, what would you say to something like that? Is that not, I, I'm not idea? saying that things that, you know, at Costco are, are bad, but again, you got to look at the quantities, you know, um, the one a day formulation are very, very low, you know, a hundred percent of the RDA based on a 2000 calorie diet, based on who, not me, you know, uh, the sports malta that I make, you know, if you take four caps, you got a hundred milligrams of beak of the, each of the bees. You got to take in a fair amount. They're water soluble. So I don't know how much you can use. I don't know how much I can use. So I go from the shotgun theory. Let's put a lot in there to make sure that no matter what your activity level, you've got enough to use and they're soluble. So whatever you don't use, it, it goes out the other end. But if you don't take enough and you're deficient today in B1, you know, something isn't going to work right. So again, multivitamin number one, then I always do recommend creatine and a protein. Those are like my three main things that no matter who you are, um, I recommend them for, you know, kids that are 12, 13, 11, you know, who are active all the way up to older people. They all need protein. They all need creatine and they all need a multivitamin. Everything else is more specialized 
And it depends on your budget. Let's face it. These things are expensive. You know, yeah, great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Jeff. Is there yeah. uh, I guess any information where to find you and other information? Just what's <laughs> new on the horizon? Yeah, I mean, you can uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, probably everywhere else. YouTube, you know, Dr. Jeff Galini. I'm I'm always putting out uh, videos. Uh, I haven't asked the scientist series that I've been doing now for several years. And I basically answer questions uh, that people ask. Um, I basically say, you know, I'm busting myths and bringing the truth because, you know, I'm, I'm never going to give you my opinion. Um, even if you ask me for my opinion, I'm not going to give it to you because you don't want to hear what I think. You want science. Um, I've written like 22 books because people always ask me, hey, can you put together a meal plan or diet plan or what did you do on your peak week? So I wrote all these books and I just give them away for free. And, and again, you know, it's part of education. So you can go to efxsports.com and any of my books you can download for free all the way from, you know, andropause, the menopause. I got a book about creatine, hair loss, reco recovery from injuries, um, <laughs> the truth about your testosterone, carb phobia. I mean, there, there's all kind of cool books, uh, but they're all science-based and documented. So again, you really, uh, anything I can put out, you know that, again, it's based on facts and not opinion, um, where today... You know, social media is based on opinion and not much facts. Um, other than that, you know, I'm out there. Uh, we don't do trade shows anymore. That's kind of a lost art. So I don't really get out much. So I just try to put out a lot of content. Um, and I always give out my email addresses. So, you know, people are emailing me, they're messaging me. And that is me. I answer every question. Uh, sometimes it may take a couple hours because I have to do it on lunch break or when I'm doing cardio at, at night. But I always, you know, answer all my questions, no matter what they are. And I get some that are off the wall. <laughs> and if it's okay. not my area of expertise, I will tell you that's not my area of expertise because <laughs> I am not a medical doctor. And a lot of people ask me for med medical advice. So, you know, again, I, I don't do that. that I don't, you know, that's not me. But if you want to know anything about training supplements, you know, uh, just about anything else, uh, nutrition, you know, that that's what uh, I do know. <laughs> that's, that's excellent. Cause I can attest to that. Like I said, 20 year plus years ago or 20 plus <laughs> years, I should say I emailed you and you personally gotten back to me. So that's awesome. I can definitely say you do that. So thank you for doing that. Well, I really appreciate your time. This was yeah. really, been a full hour here talking to you. It was way more than I wanted to take from your time, but. Oh, that's all right. It's my pleasure, that. man. I, I love talking as you uh, have figured out. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I, when people want to do an interview and they want to send me the questions, I always say, no, don't, I, I don't like to prepare anything. Uh, you know, I'm talking from experience. And if you ask me something that I don't know, I'll just say, I don't know. You right. Know? That's the best. So anyhow, awesome. it's a pleasure, man. It was nice yeah. meeting you. Nice meeting you too, Jeff. Dr. All right. Jeff, sorry. I'll see you. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Have All a right, good one, man. Again. All right. Take well, care.